One of the first things you've probably done, your partner's probably done, someone's probably recommended to you when you open up or think about how you're not getting pregnant is to try and find the magic supplement, right? The right pill, the golden ticket. We are so quick to look for solutions in pill bottles, but today we're going to talk about three causes of low sperm count that supplements will not actually fix. Before we get into that, welcome to the Fertility Confidence Podcast. I'm Dr. Kelsey. Thank you so much for hitting play today. I was kind of trying to think of something a little bit different for today. Um, and I love having the conversation around what can we do to support X that isn't another pill, powder, or potion. Because inside Fertility Confidence Method, when I'm helping to build out personalized care plans for our clients, I'm always looking for ways to reduce our pill count, to find strategic supplements that are going to work for multiple systems, multiple things that we're, we're working on from their root cause piece. And when clients come in and work with us and they're already on a laundry list of supplements, one of the big issues is that they're just adding and adding and adding things, but they have actually no idea if they're right for them, what they're doing. And we need to come in and say, okay, let's go back to the beginning. What is the root cause issue here? And how do we actually support that? Before I go through our three causes of low sperm count that unfortunately supplements really aren't going to help you with. So spoiler alert, figuring out the root cause is a really big piece of proper treatment. I just want to say a big thank you to our newest podcast sponsor, Cozy Earth. Sleep is one of the most underrated fertility treatments out there. If you've listened to the podcast before, I have talked about this multiple times. And one way to ensure that you are getting good, restful, deep sleep is to go to bed in a very cozy sanctuary. And sleep has been shown to help improve sperm parameters. So something that we're not going to, you know, explicitly talk about today, but another piece of helping with low sperm count, but also motility and morphology has been shown in the research to be supported by proper sleep, improve metabolic function, improve hormone balance in both men and women. And that's why I was so excited to partner with Cozy Earth to really help you transform your bedroom into your own personal luxury sanctuary. Cozy Earth makes the most buttery soft bamboo temperature regulating sheets to help you get your best night's sleep. And you can create your sanctuary just at home, risk-free with their 100-day sleep trial and 10-year warranty, which I think is amazing. So use the code FCM and you can get 40% off at CozyEarth.com on their sheets or any of their amazing products and transform your home into your own cozy sanctuary. So thank you, Cozy Earth, for that amazing opportunity. Okay, let's talk about three causes of low sperm count that supplements are not going to fix. And number one, of course, is genetics. There are a few different genetic conditions that you literally can't do anything about. You can't control. It's just a part of you that we have to consider when we're seeing low anything from a sperm parameter perspective. Something like Klinefelter syndrome, fragile X syndrome, cystic fibrosis gene mutations, and some other chromosomal translocations all have the possibility to reduce your body's ability to make sperm. And a big thing that any sort of genetic condition or genetic anomaly does is it can uh, negatively impact your body's reproductive organs through development. So oftentimes with a lot of genetic conditions, we'll see delayed puberty or testicular dysfunction or small testicles, but sometimes there's no signs at all, which is why whenever we have infertility, male infertility, doing some genetic testing, it just makes good sense, honestly, to rule some of this stuff out. Um, the one big one in particular, Klinefelter syndrome, 3% of men who've been diagnosed with infertility do have Klinefelter syndrome. So not a huge amount, but it's definitely there. One in 1,000 men um, worldwide are diagnosed. It's a, basically, it's just an extra X chromosome. And you might not have any other symptoms, right? Usually smaller testicles, infertility, it might not even be identified until you are older and start to show some other symptoms. There's some bone density pieces that can come into play. Um, 
and you might have, it might be diagnosed earlier if you are delayed puberty, but I have had some clients who haven't been diagnosed until they've struggled to get pregnant and they have been diagnosed with male factor infertility. So genetics is just one thing we have to think about that we can't out supplement obviously, but when we're talking about figuring out why is my sperm count low, or we can insert motility or morphology. Why are those numbers low and how do I fix them? We need to figure out the root cause. And if the root cause is genetics, that's going to be a completely different treatment, AKA I would probably recommend IVF (laughs) in this case. Um, then we're not wasting time, right? We're not wasting hope. We're not wasting money on all these other quick fixes or in even research methods to try to help because the root cause is not something that supplements are going to be able to fix. So the first one is genetics. We need to have that in the back of our minds. The second one is quite common. So varicoceles, you've probably heard me use this term before, which is basically just a fancy way of saying vein enlargement in the scrotum. And it's a problem for two reasons. One, it can actually cause physical blockages for sperm getting mixed into the semen when it's on its route out. And it can cause some minor heat production. And if you haven't already listened to our episode on how heat can impact sperm parameters, testicular heat specifically, go back and listen to episode 101, which I will link in the show notes if you're listening to the pod and I'll pop up on the screen here on the YouTube video for you. Um, But if you haven't checked that episode out, we share a lot of really great research uh, that we have around why heat can impact male factor fertility and varicoceles being a a dilation and a collection of blood in the scrotum. Naturally, there can just be some minor heat produced, and that can also have a trickle down effect in not just sperm count, but all other aspects of sperm parameters. So finish off this episode, go check out 101 if you haven't listened to it already. Varicoceles are fairly common. Uh, 15 to 20% of men and just in the general population can have a varicocele. Oftentimes they might not even cause any problems. They might not even know that they're there unless they feel something different. Um, But in the infertile male population, 40 to 50% of men who've been diagnosed with infertility have also been diagnosed with a varicocele. So it's a very common issue in terms of impacting male fertility that we, again, aren't seeing being at the top of the list, being properly diagnosed, being looked for when we're doing a thorough workup. Some symptoms you might have beyond just low count and low motility is pain or heaviness in your scrotum, distension, testicular atrophy, so shrinking of your testicles, and maybe a little bit of warmth. But a lot of men truly don't that I have in our practice in FCM that have been diagnosed with varicoceles, a lot of them don't have any other symptoms. They're just found through investigation when we're looking for root cause reasons as to why their sperm parameters aren't great. Um, Whereas I find if we leave them and we don't do any surgery, it's later in life when you're a bit older, maybe they've grown, that's when people tend to start feeling any sort of discomfort. So we actually got this question inside our office hours in FCM. I run a daily office hours to answer all of your questions. And someone had asked, if we opt to not do the surgery, what are the risks? And and that's just one of the pieces is like, it might not be bothering you now. You might not have any pain, discomfort, um, or atrophy, but it could develop. So that's just always something you want to keep in the back of your head when you're making the decision of where do we go from here. They, because of the heat aspect, it's not just count that can be a problem, but motility and morphology can also be uh, a piece of the puzzle. So we want to look at all sperm parameters when we're talking about uh, varicoceles. Surgery is really easy. Um, And I obviously say that as a woman. (laughs) And I know that anything that has to do with the testicles is like usually a hard no for most men. I get it. But in the grand scheme of things, surgery is very, very easy, very simple, though it's not a guarantee that it's going to fix the problem either. Unfortunately, small studies have shown large improvements in count and motility, sometimes two to three X after surgery, which can be really huge for some couples, especially if you're in the less than 5 million per milliliter range, when they're really saying IVF is your only option. If varicocele surgery can double or triple, which still doesn't take you into optimal levels, but it definitely gives you some more wiggle room for maybe unmedicated conception 
or an IUI being actually on the table as a possibility for you. And for a lot of couples that we work with, they're really looking for those possibilities. And so if this is something that can give you that slight edge, amazing. The other argument I will make is that if you are planning on going down the IVF route and we know there's, there's a varicocele there, not fixing it still isn't likely the best option for two reasons. One, even though you're doing IVF and we need less sperm because we just do, right? We need one sperm for each egg that's retrieved. So we don't need a lot, but we want to give a really great pool of selection. 